Solutions. I'm based in Sacramento, California. We appreciate you all joining today's webinar on the Trimble R1 receiver and how it can be used in conjunction not only with smartphones but tablets, um, some other products as well. There was just a, a huge amount of interest for this webinar. Normally, I'll have uh, maybe 20 or 30 people hop on a webinar depending on what the topic is. And for this webinar, we had almost 150 people sign up for the webinar. So obviously, there's a lot of interest in uh, using these receivers and increasing the accuracy of your phones and your tablets. I'm going to try to be very respectful of everybody's time and try to wrap things up in about 30 minutes with the webinar. If you missed my, my, uh, my little conversation before we started, normally I will open up the lines for questions at the end of a webinar. But because we have so many people on the line today, um, you'll notice on the little dashboard of your GoToWebinar, there's a spot in there where you can ask questions. So what I'd like people to do is as we're rolling along with this webinar and a question comes to mind, please ask the question in that section. I'm not going to have the time to open up the lines for all individual questions today. But your, your electronic data solutions representative, depending on which part of the country you're calling from, we should could be following up with you individually within the next day or two. So if your question does not get answered, don't get frustrated. We'll do our very best to get those questions answered for you. And what I'll try to do as I'm looking through the questions is, is find the questions that seem to be the most related and try to get those answered. So with that said, let's go ahead and get things started this morning on the webinar. In terms of our agenda today, I'll talk very briefly about Electronic Data Solutions, who we are. We'll break right into the Trimble R1 GNSS receiver, talk a little bit about some of the software options uh, that are out there right now. There are quite a few, but I'm going to focus on a couple of Esri-centric and Trimble-centric software options for you. We're not going to go into a live demo today. I'm going to give you a real 10,000-foot overview, and again, just so you know, to be respectful of time, we're not going to get into the weeds with this webinar. It's going to be very high end. And then based on your questions and your follow-up with your rep, then you can kind of really get into the specifics of the operation. And then the last thing that we'll do today is we'll uh, follow up with some of those written questions that you'll have for me. We'll also do a couple of poll questions during the webinar, uh, one, to kind of get a feel from everybody as to what they're using, and two, just kind of make sure you're paying attention. So in terms of our company, Electronic Data Solutions, we've been in business now, I think, for, I think, officially now for 29 years. Uh, our company was started by Linda and David Dean, and uh, still presides in Jerome, Idaho, which is located in southern Idaho, near Twin Falls, Idaho. I think we're up to about 25 employees right now. And what I like to tell people about our company is we're not looking for world domination at this point. <laughs> we're looking for domination on the West Coast. So if you see the map and the stars, that's where all our offices are located, anywhere from Portland, Oregon, Olympia, Washington, uh, Liberty, Utah, uh, Bozeman, Montana, Idaho Falls, Jerome. So we're, we're all over kind of the West Coast at this point. And we provide all kinds of interesting solutions. Some folks may think of us as just, hey, they're the Trimble guys, or hey, they're the Esri guys. But when it comes right down to it, electronic Data Solutions is really ideally situated to help you with all kinds of data collection questions and, and, and uh, um, ideas that you may have. We don't want you to just think of us as GPS people or GIS people. We do things with landfills. We do things with water quality, water level. So you know, whatever it is, what I tell people is when it comes to environmental data collection devices or software, Always come to us first, because nine times out of 10, we can help you out. And what I tell my customers is, if I cannot help you out, I'll point you in the right direction, even if it's towards one of our competitors. In terms of my background, uh, I went to Washington State University in lovely Pullman, Washington. Um, that great picture down there you see is my son, Ethan. He's four years old. I've been kind of in the environmental data collection business now for almost 15 years. And I've been with Electronic Data Solutions for eight years. So I have been doing this for a long time. I've seen a lot of different technologies come and go. And the R1 receiver is really one of the most exciting. So I mentioned a couple of poll questions along the way. Before we really kind of launch into our webinar, I wanted to start with a question for everybody out there. 
please uh, do this as quickly as you can. I don't want to spend a lot of time answering poll questions, but it does give us a pretty good indication of, of the mindset. So our first poll question today is, what are you currently using to collect the data out there in the field? What we'll do is give you 30 seconds here or so to answer that question, and then I'll show the results. We'll close up the poll, and then we'll kind of move right along. Fantastic. So we're almost, uh, we've almost hit 100%. So I appreciate everybody's attention. I'm going to go ahead and close up that poll, and let's go ahead and share those results with everybody. I like to see this. Most people out there watching our uh, webinar today are using Trimble devices. That could be anything from a, a Geo 2003, a 2005, a 2008, maybe the 6000 series, maybe the new 7Xs. Maybe you're using a receiver or a Nomad or a Juno, whatever you're using. Uh, we always appreciate people using the Juno pro or the uh, Trimble products, and some people out there actually not using anything at all. So that's great to have you folks on board today too to learn a little bit about this new receiver and some of the new technologies that are out there. Let's go ahead and we're going to jump right into it. And like I say, this is going to be a very a very 10,000 foot solution type webinar. We're not going to get really really into the specifics of everything. I want to give you a general overview of the capabilities of this device, how you connect with this device, some of the software options with this device, and then we can get more into the one-on-one -on -one as your uh, representative from Electronic Data Solutions hopefully follows up with you here in the next day or two. So why the need for the R1 GNSS receiver? Well, we've seen it coming for years. Trimble has seen it coming for years. When I go out and visit my customers, almost inevitably, the first thing they say to me is, we want to start using our smartphones. We want to start using our tablets. In many cases, they've already started doing that. I've worked with large organizations where they've done their own APIs. They've done their own apps. They're already trying to figure all this out. Um, unfortunately, um, there are so many ins and outs of trying to get this all figured out that a lot of times they end up going down the wrong path. So Trimble has been working on this for quite some time. They really wanted to make sure they had a polished product before they came out with anything, and I think the R1 really hits that sweet spot. This is kind of an overview of people using smartphones and tablets more and more in their in their day-to-day -day operations, just to kind of give you an idea of the market, who's using what. So one of the things I also like to talk about during the webinar is you're going to see bullet points from time to time. I'm not going to hit on every bullet point. I'm going to make this huge assumption that most of you know how to read. So Rather than go bullet point to bullet point to bullet point, I may hit on a few highlights and just let everybody else read the rest. iPhones, iPads, I don't know if you saw Apple's earnings report yesterday, but everybody in the world seems to have an iPad or an iPhone. And so obviously the GNSS receiver, the R1 receiver from Trimble, absolutely designed to work with the iPhone and the iPad. You know, one of the things, though, I think where people get hung up on is yes, it has built-in GPS, yes, it has Wi-Fi, yes, it has cellular, but that does not mean that these are accurate data collection devices. In fact, I'll show you a slide here in a minute or two that shows you just how inaccurate these devices are. If you were to just take a piece of software, say uh, Trimble's TerraFlex or Esri's Collector, throw it on an iPad or an Android phone and just go out and start collecting data, um, you'd be very disappointed in, for the most part with the results when you get back into the office. So when it comes to you know this combination that these phones and tablets are using of Wi-Fi, cellular, and yep, even satellite, um, they are notoriously inaccurate. Take for instance um, assisted GPS on these phones, you're looking at anywhere from you know five to eight meters. Wi-Fi is even worse. And if your phone has to switch over to a cellular network to try to collect this data, it's off the map. So keep that in mind as you start rolling out these technologies, that you can't just hand somebody a Galaxy tablet or an iPhone or an iPad and just assume you're going to get this fabulous accuracy with these things, because the bottom line is you're not. And again, that's kind of why Trimble came out with the R1 receiver to address a lot of these accuracy issues. 
There's a lot of limitations. You know, how come I'm standing here and I'm getting two meter accuracy? How come I'm standing over there and I'm getting five meter accuracy? There are so many uh, different things in terms of the, the atmosphere, the stratosphere, all these different things are, are kind of cooking up to make that device fairly inaccurate. One of the huge ones is multipathing, and that is as that signal is coming down from the sky, it's bouncing off rocks, it's bouncing off buildings, it's bouncing off you, and that's why, especially with these phones, you get into these notoriously bad accuracy issues. There's, there's a lot of things happening out there before it hits that phone or that tablet. So that's why we're really excited to introduce this Trimble R1 GNSS receiver. I'm going to highlight something for you right now. I really want you. I really want you to really pay attention to this part of it. This is a GNSS receiver, and I'll tell you in just a second exactly what that entails and what that means. But there's a big difference between GNSS and GPS in terms of the the, the overall look and feel of the receiver. It's very, very simple to set up. It's the size of, I don't know, it's the size of a pack of cigarettes, maybe. Um, it slips very easily into your pocket. It's just a couple of, you know, there's really one main button on there. Uh, there's a spot for an antenna port. There's a spot to charge with a USB 2.0 cable. And that's really it. You've got a couple of status lights telling you whether or not you've got satellites, um, whether or not you're powered up, whether or not you've got your Bluetooth connection. But in terms of the overall look and feel of this device. Not a lot of bells and whistles on it, but when you get inside it, there are tons of bells and whistles, for lack of another term. So the difference between a GNSS receiver and, say, a GPS receiver is we are bringing in satellite constellations from multiple countries, multiple continents across the world. So when we think GPS, we think of the 24 or 26 GPS satellites that the United States has put up. But there are other satellite constellations out there. The Europeans have theirs, Galileo. Um, the Japanese have one. The Chinese have one. So your G1, or I'm sorry, your R1 GNSS receiver from Trimble is tracking all of those satellite constellations along with real-time SPAS receivers. So I think this picture on the left gives you a really good idea of What's going on while well, you're collecting data in your R1? And that data is sent from the R1 to your phone with a little app that I'll show you here in just a second. But what a nice picture this is, showing you all the different GPS satellites it's tracking, SPAS, GLONASS, Galileo. So while you're out there in the field, you can see real time which satellite constellations and what real time corrections that you're receiving. So what if you're using real-time corrections? What if you're using WAS or SPAS, and that's just not good enough? What if you're out there and you're still not getting very good accuracy in terms of what you're looking for out in the, out in the field? One of the great things that Trimble's going to introduce or has introduced with the R1 receiver is this RTX correction service. And what that allows you to do is uh, it's a service I don't know if I would necessarily compare it to a, a VRS, but it is along those lines. It's a subscription service. And depending on what you're looking for and depending on the accuracies that you're looking for, you can get down to some meter. Uh, sometimes you can get a little better than that. And whether or not you want to pay for a subscription service or use real-time SPAS, that is completely and entirely up to you. But there are the options out there for satellite-based, Wi-Fi-based. It doesn't really matter. It just is, I guess kind of the main thing is what your need is and where are you and what part of the world are you in in terms of which one of those satellite services or subscription services would work best for you. Again, that's a conversation that you can have with your electronic data solutions representative when they follow up with you after this webinar. In terms of coverage, you know, if I'm going to pay X amount of dollars a month or X amount of dollars a year to do this, you know, what's my coverage? Well, with a satellite-based service, you can see you're going to get coverage pretty much throughout everywhere in the world, except parts of Asia, you know, maybe uh, Greenland, places where you may or may not end up going. But the, the coverage itself is phenomenal. That does not mean that 
if I'm in if I'm in the jungles of South America, I'm going to get submeter accuracy. A lot of that would have to do um, with the with the type of terrain that you're in, obviously the type of canopy that you're in. But the coverage itself, you'll get pretty much everywhere throughout the world. So once you purchase your R1, once you're looking into these different subscription services, it's really, really easy to order. You can either call the Trimble dealer or you can go online and activate it. We obviously would prefer that you call us. If you're working with, say, myself in California, call me up. I can get that service started for you. And then I believe that um, they're still doing I'd have to double check on this, but I think they're also um, allowing for, say, 14-day trials, too. So you can kind of try it before you buy it. But setting it up is extremely easy. I'll tell you just as, as a person living in Sacramento, California, when I take my R1 out to my, my front yard, and I, I, live in a, I live in suburbia. There's not a lot of trees or anything like that. I'm getting about 3 foot, 3.1 foot accuracy within three or four minutes. And that's a real time correction. So if you want to get a little bit more information on how the subscription service works, there's a link at the bottom of this page, and you can certainly take a look at that as well. So one of the nice things you kind of saw on an earlier slide where it was showing all the different satellite constellations and how many satellites we were acquiring. When you get the R1, there's a, there's a couple of little apps that you need to, um, uh, to install either on your iPhone or your iPad or your Galaxy tablet or whatever. And one of them is called the GNSS. Uh, status utility and basically you just you go to the Play Store, you go to iTunes, you download it and it's really cool because once you get it installed and you get the connection going between the R1 and the phone or the tablet, it's going to show you your real-time accuracy, it's going to show you how many satellites you have, it's going to show you which constellations are in use. So basically what it is, is it's giving you sky plot, it's giving you accuracy, it's giving you these things. It's going to let you know if you're on the subscription service, if you're using real time. It takes just a couple of minutes to set up. But, but that is a part of this, this, this kind of overall plan that you, re, you really need to have that on there so you can see the accuracy that you're getting. And that's a free app, I should add. In terms of how do I carry this, where can I put it, things like that. Again, I mentioned it's about the size of a pack of cigarettes. Now, what we have found in our testing, I want to highlight something for you real quick. What we have found in our testing is this thing absolutely works the best when you have it kind of sitting end to end like this. Now, kind of, I think what most people would normally want to do is lay this thing flat. You know, you want to lay it on your car, you want to lay it on the ground, or whatever. The best thing to do in this situation is to try to have it sitting upright just like this. What we found in our testing is that absolutely works the best in terms of getting the, the, the best accuracy when you're out in the field. So kind of keep that in mind. Obviously, if it's snugged away in your pocket like this gentleman wearing the vest, that's the perfect way to set this up. And the other thing you'll notice is obviously wherever the receiver is, that's where you're going to be taking the GPS position. So if you have it in your pocket, don't forget to take it out of the pocket and put it on the, uh, uh, you put it next to the light, put it next to the fire hydrant. You kind of do whatever you need to do because that's where that position is going to be. So it's nice to tuck it in your pocket as you're going from place to place, but make sure you take it out and actually put it on top of or next to the item that you're trying to position. You can put it on a hat. There's all kinds of interesting ways you can set this up. I just think the easiest thing to do is stick it in your pocket. When you do buy the R1, it does come with a little thing that you can put on your belt. But like I say, the best thing to do, in my opinion, having tested it, is go ahead and just put it in your pocket. So we've learned a little about the kind of the overall aspects of the R1 right now. So what I'd like to do is open things up for our second poll question. And that is, when you are out there collecting data, what is most important to you in a device like this? So if we, again, we can take maybe 30 or 45 seconds to answer the poll question. We'll show you the results as soon as we're finished. Now, if for some reason your answer is not up there, the, the poll really only allows us to uh, throw four or five questions up there. So I apologize if your answer is not necessarily up there. Maybe just choose the one that's kind of closest to the answer that you would like to see. OK, 
Fantastic. Thanks, everybody, for your votes and for doing that so quickly. I'm going to go ahead and we'll shut the poll down for now and share the answer with everybody. You know, accuracy, that doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, that's why people buy 7Xs. That's why people will buy our, our centimeter unit. Accuracy is, you know, it's, it's probably it's, it's the first question I ask people when we get into the conversation about an application is how important is accuracy to you? And in terms of ease of use, which is the second most popular answer, and these things are ridiculously easy to use. I'm going to do, a, like I say, a really high-end overview of TerraFlex software and collector. In fact, I'm not even really going to get into the app itself. I just want to talk about the process. But what you'll find as you start deploying this type of technology to your field folks is they will absolutely love it. Everybody's familiar with you know, just hitting a button to start an app. And once you see the interface, it's really, really easy to use. So. In terms of getting your, your field crews and, and getting people to use this technology, it's probably one of the, in, in terms of, of getting new technology out there, it's probably one of the, the easiest ways to get people to use technology because we're already also comfortable with this type of a technology, whether it's a phone or a tablet or something like that. So again, I really want to point out before I jump into software options, I'm not going to give a live demo. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the weeds with what we're going to do for software. Um, there are two, at this point, you know, there's, there's two softwares that I really want to talk about and just promote a little bit. The first one is TerraFlex, and that's Trimble solution. Again, that it, can reside, it can reside on your Trimble GPS unit. It can reside on your tablet. It can reside on your phone. Um, and it, it has its utilities and its pluses and its minuses and its benefits, and it, it'll do things that that you want it to do, it may not do everything that you that you don't want it to do, but again, it's a it's a legitimate solution in terms of, of looking for stuff out there to put on that phone or put on that tablet. All you have to do in TerraFlex, the first thing you do, um, you'll you'll go on to the Trimble Cloud, you'll create what we call a project. Projects are very easy to collect uh, to to create. They've just had uh, recently they've done some upgrades where you can do some uh, conditional attributing. There's a lot of drop and drag stuff going. It's actually pretty fun to create a project, quite honestly, because you can drop and drag, you can move things around, you can use symbology. So it's actually pretty cool. So then you create that project, you send it off to the field users, and they get it pretty much exactly the way you set it up with features and attributes and some other conditioning that you can do in there. And then they're out there, they're collecting that data in real time once they finish, they simply hit a synchronize button. It goes back up to the Trimble Cloud, syncs the data with the server, and from there, um, you can take that information and you can go into your GIS or Pathfinder Office, um, kind of depending on what your workflow is. But it is a, it's, it's in terms of ease of use, it is it's right up there with anything I've ever tried. And in terms of getting people to use it and understand it out in the field. TerraFlex is probably something that either an electronic data solutions representative or maybe even your GIS or GPS person in your office could um, basically teach somebody in, I don't know, half an hour, maybe, maybe even less depending on how quickly you want to deploy folks out there. So that's TerraFlex in a nutshell. Again, more information, we're happy to have those one-off conversations with you. And if there's any, you know, again, any questions that you might have, um, you can ask that in the question in the question section. Uh, for those of you who may have joined late, I guess I, I should point this out one more time. Generally, at the end of webinars, um, I do like to open up the phones for questions. But we have almost a hundred people on today's webinar. That would not make a lot of sense. So if you have a question, um, just just uh, fill it out in the question form on the overlay that came when you did your uh, go to webinar and I'll get to you know I'll try to get to five or six of them depending on our time frame um, the ones that we can answer don't fret we'll give you a call individually and answer all your questions we can talk about demos evaluation units accuracy all that stuff so the second option when it comes to software at least you know kind of from our perspective at electronic data solutions is Esri's collector app so anybody that has ArcGIS server for ArcGIS desktop automatically 
get the copy of Esri's Collector, and they also get use of ArcGIS Online. One of the most powerful tools you will ever use in the future is ArcGIS Online. It allows you to easily deploy information to your end users. It allows you to easily send information out to your field crews. It allows you to, to do all kinds of stuff on the web in terms of sharing with the public, sharing with specific users within your organization. It is one of the coolest products I have ever seen, and it is so simple to use. And if you are GIS-centric, it's very easy to take information right from your GIS, pop it right into Collector, and then send that information out to your field crews via the Collector app. It really, really is slick, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that Electronic Data Solutions will probably have a, a webinar featuring Esri Collector. I know we've already done stuff on Terraflex in the past, um, but it really is a great solution, especially, again, for those organizations that are very GIS-centric. If you're a smaller organization or you're not super GIS-centric, then the Terraflex solution might be a little better for you because those forms are so easy to create. They're so easy to, to get out to your, your work crews and so easy to synchronize up. So again, it just kind of depends on which side of the fence you're on and which workflow you're most comfortable with and which workflow you're most familiar with. There, there, are, there are a lot of questions out there right now. I mean, we're really kind of not anywhere near the golden age of where all of this is, is, is going to be absolutely transformative. We're, we're, we're there. We're starting. I'd say if you were, you know, if you're kind of looking at a, a graph, we're, we're towards the bottom, but we're, we're headed towards the top. There's going to be, uh, especially with these softwares, every day they're improving the software. Um, they're making it more easier to use for your field crews. They're, they're getting to the point now where you're going to be able, say you're a power utility, you'll be able to put out an app so that um, if there's a power outage or someone sees a pothole or something like that, you know, that they can respond via an app and then send that information right up to you so you know where to send your crews for, again, filling potholes or maybe there's a meter out or something like that. We're really just starting to get rolling on this, and it really is super, super exciting. So the differences between TerraFlex and Esri Collector, I've got a couple of slides here where I just kind of lay out some of the similarities and some of the differences. Again, I'm not going to go through this line by line. I will leave this up for about 30 or 45 seconds so you can kind of see where they differ and where they are the same. And I'm going to leave this up for a second, and then I've got a second one I'd like to pop up as well. Also, as you're looking at this, please, again, keep in mind those questions. If you want to write out a question, let me know, and then at the end of the webinar, I'll answer a few of them for you uh, as best I can, and then um, the ones I can't answer, we'll have individual folks follow up. So this is a very, very large slide in terms of information. And nothing you have to try to memorize, of course, but um, talks a little bit about, you know, a lot of people are always asking what kind of base maps can I use, what kind of information can I put on there. Can I only collect new information? No, you can, you can take existing information and take that out to the field in case you have to do some corrections or things have changed. Again, these are not quite along the lines of, say, um, TerraSync yet or ArcPad yet or some of the third-party apps, but each and every day they are getting closer and closer and closer. Okay. So I think I've left that up long enough. Again, don't, don't get too hung up on all that, but hopefully if you had a couple of uh, questions about the differences between the two, um, this does a, an okay job of, of answering some of those differences. So we're up to our uh, final poll question, and that means we're getting very near the end of the webinar. So my final poll question for everybody today is, as we looked at the R1 today as a kind of a high-end overview, what was the most attractive feature to you? So if you can take just a second to answer that question. And again, make sure you're also thinking about questions to ask me at the end of the webinar because it's coming up here fairly quickly. Wanting to be very respectful of your time. I know that when I'm on a webinar and someone says it's 30 minutes, they go an hour, I get really frustrated. So we're at about the 30-minute mark right now, and we are just about ready to wrap up. So it looks like most people have voted. Let's go ahead and show those results to you. 
Not surprisingly, most people like the fact that now with the R1 GNSS receiver, you're going to be able to get, in many cases, submeter accuracy. So I'll go ahead and hide that. I appreciate everybody answering those poll questions. And we actually get feedback on those poll questions. And we know who asked them and, and how they were answered. So it can help us as we address your individual needs as well. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go into the question section. Again, normally I would open this up for questions over the phone. I simply can't do that today. We have almost 100 people on the line. But what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm going to, look, up some, I'm going to look at some of the questions that folks have asked. And from there, I'll do my very best to answer some of them. So I can see already a lot of people are curious about the price. So the price, uh, the list price for the R1 receiver, I believe, is $24.95. And depending on if you're a government agency or whatever, there may be a little bit of discounting there. Uh, but $24.95 is the price. And I have, to, I have to be honest with you. We had long discussions with Trimble about this. And I think they did a masterful job of positioning this device in terms of where does it fit in with, say, um, a Garmin? Where does it fit in with, say, a 7X? I mean, I think in terms of, of pricing, I think they did an outstanding job of kind of figuring out where that price point should be. So that's, that's the answer to the um, uh, pricing question. Uh, Kristen asked the question uh, about accuracies, um, uh, post-processing versus live. So like I mentioned during the webinar, I with just real-time SFAPs or WASP corrections in the field, with no subscription service whatsoever, I'm getting submeter accuracy at my home. Now, I haven't, you know, I haven't been over to San Francisco. I haven't gone up into the Redwoods to, to kind of see uh, where things would go from there. But that's what I'm getting real-time. And then she kind of asked the follow-up here about post-processing. The question, the answer to that is yes. You can actually post-process that data. What we have found, though, and you really can only post-process if you're, if you're using, say, uh, ArcPad with positions or you're using um, TerraSync in terms of post-processing. Um, but what we've found is sometimes with post-processing, the one thing you have to keep in mind with the R1 is there is no multipath rejection like there is with, say, the 7X. So we talked at the beginning of the webinar about all these signals kind of bouncing around. Well, they're going to be bouncing around with the R1, too. So what you're going to find when you post-process is if you're trying to post-process, say, off a of phone especially or something like that, you may actually get worse data when you're post-processing off the R1. So it kind of, it's going to kind of be hit and miss. You're going to have to play with that data a little bit. Um, but again, at this point, really only post-processing um, if you're using ArcPad with positions or GPS correct or if you're, if you're using TerraSync. All right, let me see if I can find another question here to answer. Hang on just a second. Let's see. And I'm, and I'm sorry, my, my window for asking these questions, for, for getting these answers is very, very small. So I'm kind of scrolling through. Yeah, that's another price question. I've got a question about uh, using this with the VRS. Um, and I don't, I, I haven't tried this with the VRS yet, but my guess is if your VRS is giving you submeter accuracy, and obviously you can use it with the VRS, um, that's, then you're probably going to get about the same accuracy. Uh, I asked a question about centimeter accuracy. No, you're not going to get centimeter accuracy with this device. This device is designed to give your cell phone or your tablet better accuracy than it's getting now. There is always going to be a need for high accuracy data collection, whether it's uh, you know underground wires or gas lines or whatever that is. There's always going to be that need um, to go out there and do the high accuracy collection. These devices are really designed to get you within that submeter range, which for a lot of people, especially if it's, a, if it's an above ground asset, a submeter is probably going to be great for most people. But again, if you're dealing with tricky things or things where you need high accuracy data, um, and again, I'm talking about maybe a couple of inches of centimeter accuracy. The R1 is not going to be the solution. 
So there's a few other questions on here, um, and a lot of them are dealing with pricing. I've got people asking if they can get a copy of the webinar. So I think what I'll do at this point is we'll take these questions. And again, everybody who asks a question, um, when we get our final report from GoToWebinar, we'll see who asked the question and what the question was. So as we kind of go out to everybody, give you individual phone calls, we'll know that you've asked that question and we will address that question. But a lot of these things are kind of uh, dealing with price and, and, and asking about the presentation. So I suppose we could make the presentation available. I'll, uh, I'll talk to my manager and see if that's something that we could get out. You know, obviously, this webinar is designed to, to kind of wet your whistle, to get you interested in this. What I'd like to do as the, as the guy who covers California for our company, would love to come to your office, talk to your folks, do a demo, maybe leave you an evaluation unit, and, and, and understand your application before I just say, hey, the R1 is the answer. Because it may be, it may not be. A lot of that is determined by our individual conversations. So at this point, I think I'm going to end the webinar. We've got your questions. We will follow up with everybody on a one-to-one -one basis. I know I will with the folks here in California. I really appreciate everybody jumping on this webinar. Um, for folks who didn't make it in your office, maybe share the information with them. Um, we are recording this webinar, so you can always go to our website, uh, electdata.com, and you can play the web replay the webinar anytime you want. Um, but again, thanks, everybody, for attending. If you have any questions, we will again answer them as a one-off with some of our other reps. Hope you have a great day, and hope you got a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little better knowledge about the R1 submeter accuracy and how this device might be right for you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.